This is an ultralight, which means it has to weigh a certain weight, under 225 pounds, single occupant, can't fly faster than 65 miles an hour. And, um, you know, it's really designed around not just the airspace. You normally are flying it in the city, but you're flying it in the forest, or exactly like the where there's not a lot of people. We have special permission from the FAA to fly here. In fact, ATC, we're in contact with them because from the surface, it's Bravo airspace. It is the most tightly secured airspace and the most congested airspace, as you can tell, by everything flying overhead. So to be able to fly here at CES, uh, we are the first to ever do that, and it's a privilege and honor to be able to be the first to fly at CES. So Eric is getting ready, and he's going to start powering up here. He's just going to do a quick two-minute flight for you, give you a feel for what uh, what, it, what it feels like, and do a little bit of maneuvers for you. He'll be in taxi load, so he won't be going fast because he'll be to stay low. solar charging stations, it knows where it is, so it'll always get you to a station to then have a fresh set. And most people don't have five miles to fly anyway, so. I'm sorry, say it again? No, the FAA requires that you are the operator, so you have to be in full control of it. So we have a map, but well, yeah, you can hover the hands off, right? But if you, you can't autonomously say tap on that point, and then it'll go there. You have to guide it along. So we have a magenta line, uh, which is familiar for most pilots. You follow the, the line, and uh, so you can get to the where you want to go. On the, so there's a map uh, on the screen. There's a full-size map that shows exactly where you are, and uh, so you can kind of say, "I want to go there," and it'll guide you. But you're actually doing the controls to stay on that line. Uh, you can't remotely control it. It's an ultralight, it's not a 107. Oh, okay. okay. So part 103 versus part 107. And the FAA has been great. You know, for them, this is uh, an area where they're allowing for innovation to occur uh, within the parameters. You know, they are a dual mandate uh, organization, so uh, they want to see uh, safety as a high priority, but also innovation. So the 103 category, ultralight, it's a single person, has to stay under a certain amount of weight, and then a certain speed, so you can't fly more faster than 60 miles an hour. When you meet those requirements and you're in your under controlled airspace, you don't need a pilot license, and you are taking the risk. Uh, we're not looking to do that. It, it could be. I mean, it's a fly-by-wire, but uh, we're wanting to stay in that ultralight category for this vehicle. Yeah. 
company will be doing other things, but this is our first out, and obviously we want to have as many people enjoy flight. So it's 150,000 retail as we've listed here for the show. Uh, that includes the vehicle uh, six passengers. Basically, it's a turnkey system with a charging stand and training. Uh, we know that price will come down a little bit, uh, but uh, but we all come from aviation and automotive background. So our strategy was to uh, come out with a tech solution, so to speak could fit with the sport and recreation category that anyone can fly. I mean, I've flown aerobatics in my life and done a lot of neat, you know, flights, but honestly, this is actually somewhat more fun because I don't have to work that hard, you know, and it's easy. It's basically a magic art. I'm probably repeating myself, but that's honestly the way I feel. You just, you can see I let go, you know, you're just kind of sitting there and you get this neat perspective. Um, and go much higher. The rules say we can go up to 700 feet in a controlled airspace, but it's meant to be uh, just above the terrain vehicle, so really 50, 100 feet is plenty high. Yeah. And it's amphibious, so you can go to your favorite fishing hole. Um, this uh, pod has uh, got a flotation underneath it, and then there's dual floats on the fuselage. But you can just land in the water as is? You land in the water pieces. and yeah. you can take off. It sits about where the, the wedge is uh, with a person. It sits about there in the water. And obviously, you know, if it's rough weather, you're going to get bounced around a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But, uh, APS, it also has inertial navigation systems, and there's lasers that are looking at the ground. So it's got a lot of sensing to say where it should stay in place and time. But we soften that because it's not very comfortable for a person in it, just <laughs> totally still. So we let it do a little drift just for comfort. And, and of course you can dial in how much you want, but um, you know, as a test pilot I've tried different things, but I recognize that comfort is a high priority. Um, you don't want it to be so sporty that you're being shaken the whole time. You want it to be, you know, comfortable. It's meant to be an enjoyable vehicle for fun. So great.